Thank you for joining us wherever you are. This podcast episode is brought to you by the Old Ways Actual Play Team. This actual play uses the 7th edition Call of Cthulhu tabletop role-playing game rules by Chaos. This actual play is performed by adults and in an adult setting. While we try very hard to stick to language for all ages, listeners should know that this podcast may include mature themes. All content, including names, places, events, companies, and etc. that may bear resemblance to entities living or dead is strictly coincidental. My name is Michael Diamond, and for tonight's game, I will be your keeper. Thank you for joining us again in another episode of the Old Ways Podcast. I am your keeper, Keeper Michael, and we rejoin our Horror on the Orient Express campaign. Uh, so we are currently uh, in London, in the London section, but uh, today is a pretty important day. So I'm going to start with introductions to my right. Hello, I'm Mike, and I'm playing James Robert Fraser. Ah, wonderful. Uh, to Mr. Fraser's right. Hi, I'm Rena, and I'm playing Lady Elizabeth Fitzroy. All right, and at the end of the table. Hello, I'm Giles, and I'm playing Simon Griffith. All right, and to Mr. Griffiths, right? Hi, I'm Miranda, and I'm playing Maggie Bellinger. Wonderful. And last but most certainly not least. I'm Martin, and I'm playing Richard Courtney. Well, when last we left our uh, investigative crew, they had been making final preparations for their trip on the Orient Express. Uh, it seems, however, that because of some events that have happened, Miss Bellinger has uh, been offered a spot this past night to stay at Kensington because it's awfully dangerous out there with what with bodies showing up and briefcases of money and whatnot. We will open the curtain tonight in the daytime. And that'll be in the blue room, as they appointed her in Kensington, with uh, one Maggie Bellinger, who is uh, waking up from a rather strange dream. Yes, and very strange it was. Um, and I imagine Maggie would kind of awake uh, halfway between a start and but still in a haze uh, where you can't quite remember if the dream you had really happened or not. And especially since she's in a new, unfamiliar place, it would take her a moment to get her wits about her and, and realize where she was, and that uh, it, it in fact was a dream, as strange as it was. What's hard to break your senses away from is the feeling of the message card on your fingertips and how your brain interprets it partially as paper and and partially as something else. And then the the imagery, the, the, the waiting room, the faces or lack thereof. It's all very disturbing. Yes, and I would imagine that while Maggie's trying to get her wits about her, uh, she may even look down at her hands to see if she has the note still, just to to double-check that it didn't really happen. Your brain puts it there for a moment, and it's gone, a ghostly image in in an instant. It, It was there, or... Maybe. It's all very disconcerting. Yes. Well, I I don't feel quite like staying in this room much longer, so Maggie would probably quickly get up and and get herself presentable and then see what was going on about the house. Okay. You exit out into the hallways at Kensington. There are staff members that are nearby, Uh, just preparing things. You can see that they're going about their daily lives as as members of service here uh, to keep things shining as they always are. Maggie kind of has the urge to snoop around Lady E's place, (laughs) Lady Elizabeth's place. Um, But she would maybe look like she's lost and and just kind of open uh, doors and, and look around. She's not doing serious snooping, but she is intrigued by Lady Elizabeth and uh, by her home. And so she would maybe be uh, trying to find, 
acting like she's cluelessly trying to find her way around, but really just kind of peeking into rooms. Sure, I'll tell you what, give me a luck roll. Okay. 35 under 65. You enter what appears to be another bedroom. This is a room just down the hall from where yours was. This bedroom does not appear to be in use as there's not physically anyone in it, Uh, but it is a beautiful example of uh, the riches that uh, the, uh, the family here has. Every turn of wood, every pleat of curtain, all manner of uh, objects and, and uh, the uh, armoires and whatnot that are available here in this room uh, are simply wonderful. You see at the far end, though, there is a uh, what appears to be a, a small egg on a bit of a stand, almost in that Fabergé style. It's, a, it's framed by a window, and so there's, a, there's definitely some importance that's been placed on it. Yeah, um, can I take a closer look at it? Of course. Um, on the outside of the fa- on this egg, there seems to be a um, some stylized bits have been placed on it. Little gemstones, little pieces of turned silver. You can also see that there's a uh, there's filigree work along uh, the base and along the the top of it. Well, that's quite impressive. I knew that her family comes from money, uh, so I I didn't expect much less than this. Uh, Could I examine it physically? You could pick it up if that's what you want to do. Yeah, that's what I want to do. Okay. You pick it up and you kind of begin turning it a bit. Why don't you give me a listen roll? Okay. 76 against 60. There almost seems to be a bit of a ring to it hmm. when you pick it up and turn it a bit. You, it's almost as if there's... Is there a bell in it? Maybe? Yeah, It's Maggie hard to tell. Probably hold it up closer to her ear. Downstairs, while you're examining the egg, downstairs we, um, we see that uh, Mr. Fraser is uh, going about uh, making sure that things are prepared... Miss Fraser, a, a member of a staff, a, a, one of the um, one of the uh, service staff here steps in and, and says, uh, "Excuse me, Mr. Fraser." Ah, uh, yes. Uh, what can I do for you? I, I believe that the um, our, our guest, uh, Miss Miss Belanger, is it or uh, a Bellinger? I believe I made exactly the same mistake myself. Yes, of course, of course. Yes. Of course. Uh, she seems to have found her way into the uh, green bedroom upstairs. Ah. Uh. Indeed, indeed, the inquisitiveness of, uh, of our uh, our cousins from across the Atlantic. Uh, I'll I'll go up and have a word with her. Uh, just uh, rest easy. Don't worry yourself. He moves along. Yeah, so I'll make myself make my way um, up to that room, and okay. uh, and uh, I shall glide silently along the corridor towards the room, and okay. uh, a polite. A light knock on the door as I as I get to it. I'm, I'm presuming the door's a slightly ajar. It's not close to the door. Just, yeah. Maggie, there's a a knock on the door mm-hmm. behind you, mm-hmm. and it it causes you to to spook just a bit. I assumed so. Um, and so I'd like you to make a dex roll. Okay, <laughs> I saw that one coming. <laughs> he should have announced his presence yeah. much sooner. Evil. <laughs> uh, zero zero one. Oh, well, Miss Fraser, you you knock and then yeah. begin just the briefest of steps in, and you see her with um, Lady Elizabeth's mother's Fabergé egg, and you see that she's startled, and the egg goes immediately up into the air, and without even the slightest of hitch, Maggie glides forward and catches the egg immediately. Just almost as if a, a, a raptor had taken it. It's a relief. Yes, it certainly is. So um, he will have moved forward as soon as he saw the, uh, the that she had the egg in her hands. He will have, have immediately moved forward and as, as quickly and smoothly as he can in order to prevent a, an incident occurring. Um, but obviously, 
uh, Maggie has it well in hand uh, and he kind of stops stops short as he sees her catch it so dexterously uh, says, oh, <clears throat> Miss uh, Miss Ballinger, uh, yeah. if you wouldn't um, if you wouldn't mind just replacing that, um, that uh, it's it, it, it's rather valuable. Uh, oh uh, yes, of, of course. I I could have swore I heard it ringing. I'm sorry. I must have uh, taken a wrong turn and I somehow got lost. This is oh, quite a large house. I'm sure. I'm sure. Can, can I help you anyway? Would you care for some breakfast? Oh yeah, uh, that would be lovely. I find myself quite. Mm. Famous this morning. Marvellous. Well, if you'd care to follow me, I'll show you down to the dining room. Oh, that would be quite nice. I'd hate to get lost again. Of course, of course. These uh, these big houses are... Uh, are they rabbit warrens, aren't they? Oh, yes, they, they do seem that way. Well, follow me. You, you seem to be able to move around them quite quietly, though, I must well, know. Well, I'm, I'm, I suppose I'm, I'm used to it, Miss Bellinger. I suppose I'm used to it. A little bit of a fright there. Oh, I, I, I hope I didn't give you a, 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 any serious cause for concern. Oh, no, this is quite all right, Fraser. Uh, Lady Elizabeth, you also receive a very soft knock on your door. Yes, who is it? Um, Lady, it's Bennett. It's, we're just here for the morning. Uh, come on in. She steps in. It's a wonderful day outside today. It seems you've picked a good day to travel. Oh, is the weather good then? I'd rather hoped it would be. Yes, it's improving. It seems there is an, perhaps a, a few patches of open sky available for us. Wonderful. That's a good omen, I think. What shall I prepare for you? Well, I'm thinking perhaps the blue traveling suit. Uh, you know the one, the new one. And the brown hat, I think, not the black one. It's a little too somber. Hmm. Straight away. Bennett begins her rhythmic process of preparing you and getting you out of bed and making sure that you are fussed over but yet not too much um, as uh, as we remember she is a bit of a hen in that regard but uh, a loving one not uh, not a nitpicker by any means yes thank you Bennett uh, would you find the brooch for me my mother's brooch the peacock feather one I want to wear that today of course of course she steps over to your jewelry case and, and begins going, selecting the brooch out. Has the uh, our visitor made any noise this morning? Oh, not that I've heard. Not that I've heard. She seems to be uh, sleeping fitfully. I'm sure that uh, she'll be up for breakfast soon. Would you care to have it with her? Yes, I think I'll take breakfast downstairs this morning. It would be impolite to uh, have it in my room and leave my guest alone. So I suppose I must. I could tell Mr. Fraser to uh, have the have the staff prepare breakfast, breakfast downstairs for me today. Right away. She um, makes sure that you're set with what you need and she hustles off. Thank you, Bennett. Um, Ms. Fraser, you get a um, you get intercepted in the uh, in the household by Bennett, who lets you know that her ladyship will be taking breakfast with her guest. Ah, oh, thank you very much, Miss Bennett. I assumed as much. I've, uh, I've had a place laid for her. She's wearing the blue today. I think she's in a good mood. The blue? Oh, marvellous, marvellous. Um, and uh, she has everything prepared for the journey, uh, laid out uh, suitable uh, attire for her, for all eventualities? She has indeed. I've seen to everything. Marvellous, marvellous. Uh, it's a shame you can't join us for the trip, but uh, I'm, I'm sure you do uh, well here in the meantime. Plenty to be getting on with. Well, someone's got to look after Mr. Hughes. <laughs> Indeed, Miss Bennett. That's very true, very true. So um, before um, before I go down as well, just before Maggie and I uh, leave the uh, the green room, I will, of course, um, just very gently adjust the Fabergé egg and reposition it into the correct position from uh, where, wherever, the, uh, wherever it was replaced. It certainly looks better now that you've made your adjustments. Probably very minuscule adjustments, but... Uh, you know, things need to be just so. Just so. Uh, so I'll head. I'll head back down with with Maggie once uh, once I've spoken to uh, Miss Bennett. See her to the to the dining room. There'll be a place laid for her for breakfast, and I'll hold the chair for her as she sits. And so breakfast as the two of you, because I assume Mr. Fraser wouldn't be as bold as to think that he would be able to be around for breakfast. 
Oh no, I, I had my breakfast two hours ago. <laughs> right, <laughs> you've been up and you've been up for several hours now. Um, <laughs> you've got a lot to do. House doesn't look after itself, you know. <laughs> doesn't it? No, for of course not. So, Lady Elizabeth, uh, you join uh, Maggie at the at the breakfast table. Uh, this is a little bit even more for Maggie, probably a little bit more grand than you're used to. Even even your Aunt Edith, who is functionally uh, well off, is not. This is something else. <laughs> I mean, yes. um, this is something all all too different. This is quite the grand house you have, Lady Elizabeth. Oh, it's just the the London home, you know. Uh, Maplebrook is far grander than this, but it suits my needs ad- admirably. Well, I, I do hope you slept well. I'm quite excited uh, for our upcoming trip, and I must say all of the excitement over the past few days uh, may have caused me to not sleep too well last night. Oh, indeed. I'm uh, sorry to hear that. Uh, you must be very tired and uh, a little calmer today, right? Um, I'm sure that some tea or coffee would perk me right up. Lovely. Well, we have both, I suppose. Uh, I am sorry to hear that you didn't sleep well. Uh, bad dreams? Too cold? You could have rung for one of the servants to close the windows or, or uh, add fuel to the fire if you were too cold, I suppose? It is a little bit drafty in here. But, um, n- no, I think it must just be the uh, s- stress and excitement of everything going on. I'm, I must say I'm not used to so many dead bodies, uh, and that may be impacting my sleep. I did have quite a strange dream, and it reminded me about that note about the skinless one. Ah, uh, yes. Must have been a dreadful experience finding that. I can't imagine how you would sleep well at all after seeing such a dreadful thing. It's no surprise you're dreaming about it. Yes, I am hoping that a change of scenery will do us all some good. I'm sure it will. Can't be that many more dead bodies on the train, right? (laughs) I certainly hope not. There's a cough from a member of staff behind you as they um, exit out of the, the room. Don't worry, they won't say anything. One does tend to forget that there are other people in the room when the staff is around. No, oh, uh, yes, I I didn't even notice them. But I imagine a lady such as yourself can keep a staff that is quite tight-lipped. Yes, well, there, some of them were rather used to my father's comings and goings, and the others come from other great houses, so they're quite used to being discreet. I certainly appreciate you uh, letting me stay the night here. Um, What is on our agenda for today? Well, I have a few last-minute notes to write, and then I believe we're going to the train station. Fraser is making those last-minute arrangements, unless you had something else in mind that you would like to take care of. I've been practicing, uh, trying to get used to this camera that my aunt purchased for me, and I was hoping that Possibly I could get some uh, photos developed, but I don't really know my way around this area. Do you know of anywhere nearby? Well, you could ask Mr. Fraser. I'm sure he would know. There must be some sort of chemist shop or something with a, the ability to do so. If there's nothing in walking distance, you can have Mr. Fraser call Armstrong the chauffeur. Uh, he'll be happy to drive you wherever you need to go. Oh, um, yes. Uh, that sounds like a... A perfectly good idea. Was there anything else you needed? Any other final shopping or, or anything of that sort? No, I believe that I have um, everything that I need packed already. Excellent. After we finish uh, this delicious breakfast, then you can go find Mr. Fraser and uh, ask where to go. Take the chauffeur if you need to. And I will see you back here. Oh, the train leaves at 2.30, so sometime before 2 p.m., I believe. Uh, Yes, I was thinking possibly we could have another meal together before we leave. Oh, of course. Lunch, yes. Uh, I don't usually eat a large lunch, but we could do some sandwiches or something. Oh, yes, of course, yes. Just a small bite. It'll be nice. We can um, finish off our afternoon, me doing my business, and and you can take care of your 
letters you have to write, and then uh, we can have a, a little bite to eat before we set out. Very well. I will give the instructions to the cook, and we'll we'll have something uh, when you when you come back. All right. So breakfast ends, and um, knowing that breakfast is is nearing its end, I'm assuming that uh, Miss Fraser would would probably make himself somewhat available in the area just to see what was on the, the plate, so to speak, next. Yeah. Yes, absolutely, yeah. So just, uh, so just as they're clearing away the, the breakfast things, um, I'll have been uh, in my rooms. I have a, a, a few bits and pieces to uh, to attend to. I have some packing to do myself as well. Um, and uh, uh, there's a, I have a couple of letters that I've, I've written that, that need to be posted. So just as they're clearing away the, the breakfast, I'll, I'll, I'll come in and say, uh, your ladyship, um, I wonder uh, if I may have uh, 10, 15 minutes or so. Uh, I have a couple of letters to post, if that's uh, if that's uh, suitable for you. Yes, of course. Uh, do whatever you need to do, Fraser. But uh, first, could you give Miss Bellinger some directions? She, be- I believe she wants to get some photographs developed, and I'm not quite sure Ooh. where she should go for that. Photographs? Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. What, what what kind of photographs are they, Miss Ballinger? Oh, well, I uh, recently uh, became the owner of this new camera, and I've just been practicing taking photos around town so that on our journey I will be well equipped to um, take take some good shots. Oh, splendid! Some uh, some some memories some memories committed to celluloid. Uh, well, I believe there is a portrait photographer just a few streets away um i'm sure um, i'm sure they would have a dark room there if we uh, if we ask them i'm sure they'd be able to do it for us um are you wanting to get them get them done today hopefully they can manage that since we are leaving today well um i can certainly take it take it down to them myself or if you you know if you wish um, i could accompany you to the to the place or show you where it is oh that would be quite nice shall we say Five or ten minutes? Uh, would you be? Would that be suitable for you? Yes. Marvelous. I should see you in the in the hallway then. All right. So the two of you get prepared and head out to stop down to get those photos taken care of. And I assume then that uh, Mr. Fraser is also using this as an opportunity to uh, post some letters, perhaps, or yes, exactly. Do any la- any last minute items which uh, which mm-hmm. we have discussed? Yeah, absolutely. In the void of that time, uh, morning arrives for uh, Professor Courtney and uh, and Simon. And so, while not as well appointed as a breakfast at Kensington, uh, there is food to be had and tea or coffee, should you so choose. Knowing that there is a 2.30 departure for from London, Victoria, what are the two of you sorting, if anything, before you leave? Um, so Richard will be just packing his things away, making sure that he's got everything. As he packs his little case, he's probably going to be folding things several times, just making sure that the uh, corners are all at 90 degrees and everything's nice and even and uh, packed away symmetrically in the in the case as far as possible. He may repack it several times before he's happy with the way that it tessellates in the, in the case. He's going to spend some time doing that. Okay. Um, there is a note that arrives for you, Simon. It's brought up by the uh, boarding house staff there. I take the note and I tip the uh, fellow bringing me the uh, note. Just a messenger lad, whatnot. Looks almost like the one you saw at the college, but it it's not the same person. What does the note say? Um, so opening it up, it has a rather strangely worded message. The message seems to detail some sort of shipping receipt that's been placed on board a train leaving London today. I uh, see the mage is already on his game. It is. It's signed specifically. There's a fair amount of laden uh, as far as weight and whatnot. It looks like it's something akin to about 25 pounds. The note is signed by a man named John. You can see there down the letter, like, as it goes through the list, at the end of it, the person signed it, John, and then there's a very long, sweeping last name that's hard to make out. Okay. John Smith. We'll just call it that. 
Um, it's something much longer. It's it's got to be at least seven or eight characters. Okay. Uh, I will keep it, and I will also, in our meantime, while everyone's packing here in the hotel, the professor and myself, I'm going to carefully copy the fragment in. I'm assuming Greek that I found in Doctor S- uh, Julia Smith's office onto a piece of paper that I can use to try and puzzle my way through as opposed to damaging the original piece, which I will keep carefully folded up in my little Greek book. Yeah, you you can definitely tell that this piece of this fragment is, is like I mentioned before, is pretty well worn. It's uh, not only is it damaged just from age and, and likely from moisture, but uh, but it almost looks like certain sections especially the lower section looks like something was cut out of it. So maybe it was at one point affixed to something hard to say. Yeah. So I'll make a copy of that that I can fold and carry around in my wallet. But otherwise I'm going to keep the original uh, safe in the book and not plan on taking it out and using it and uh, okay. overusing it, abusing it, whatever you want to call it. The both of you are set to arrive. What method are you using to get? Are you going down the tube? Are you taking a, a taxi to get to Victoria? Or are you just simply walking from where you're at? I'm going to lead the professor to the tube. Well, professor, it seems the day has come. Your final preparations are made. And uh, probably around... How, how early are you figuring you're going to get there, Simon? Probably a good 45 minutes ahead of time. I'm not familiar mm-hmm. with the way the public transportation works, but I would inquire with the professor as well. Professor, um, for a journey like this, since you may be more, well, you will be more familiar with this, how early do we need to arrive in order to avoid any issues or entanglements? I I have to say, the, the trains have got a terrible habit of leaving a bit late, but, um, one shouldn't count on that, of course. And uh, do we have the tickets in hand already, or are these things that we're going to have to collect? You do not have the tickets in hand. You will collect them at the uh, at the station. Well, I I think as we as we don't have the tickets yet, we should. Um, oh, I don't know. Maybe turn up about an hour earlier. I'm. I, I'd hate to miss the train. Fair enough. You you ready to ride the tubes there? Oh yes, of course. I like the tubes. Yes, they're very economical, and um, it's it's interesting to watch the people and uh, um, marvel at the uh, the construction. Then he gets to be underground, which is the part he probably likes. <laughs> of course. Okay, so we'll say that you guys plan on getting there uh, just before just before two, a little bit before two, to make sure that you're set and ready. Miss Miss Bellinger and uh, Miss Fraser, you arrive at the uh, photography location. The staff there are they're kind and uh, willing to accommodate you as best they can uh, for the pictures. Um, they note that um, the um, they they are well well aware of uh, of the need for a fast. A reproduction of of uh, photos, so they'll uh, they'll work on getting them developed. Um. Yes, that is. Uh, um. That will be perfect. Um. Shall we wait, or would you like us to return? Oh no, we wouldn't think to make you make you wait. So if you'd, um, it should only take a, a few hours. Um, I would say we should have them done by uh, just just about noon. That will be perfect. Wonderful. Then they should be ready to pick up just perhaps uh, uh, about uh, about half half noon. Then we need to let them to settle and and sit, so that way they uh, they don't they don't become damaged. Yes, of course, Mister Fraser. Uh, do you have anything else to attend to now? If so, I would be glad to accompany you. That's very kind of you, Miss Ballinger. I have one or two bits and bobs to uh, to finish up, and I have a, a couple of letters to post. But uh, yes, uh, the, I very much appreciate the company. Thank you. 
All right. Frazier and Bellinger on town. That's wonderful. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Miss Frazier, where are you going? Where, where, are your, where are your final stops taking you? So, well, the first place I'm going to go is to uh, a post box and mm. obviously pop, pop my letters in the post. Um, um, Maggie might notice as I post, post them that they're, 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 if she happens to glance at the... Uh, the actual letters as I as I put them in the box that the uh, the handwriting is very very neat very neat tidy handwriting he's got um, very meticulous like like the rest of him it's probably not that surprising to her the next place that I also want to pop into the uh, the travel agent very very briefly as well um, just to speak to them just to confirm the that the tickets are all um, going to be ready for a collection at the at the station and uh, everything. Um, was booked up as uh, as I requested, and I suppose while, while I'm doing while I'm doing that, and um, you know, I'll sort of make makes any small talk with uh, Miss Ballinger as we as as we walk the streets of London in the on this crisp crisp January morning. It's February now. Are we in February already? All right, yeah. okay, okay. I we thought we were right February. at the very, at the end, the end of January still. All right, okay. Um, we reached eight. So it's February fourth. Yes. Traveling day, memory serves correctly. It's quite all right, Mister Fraser. I too sometimes forget what months it is when the days fly by so fast these days. <laughs> ah yes, well there has been rather a lot going on, has there not? I must say, um, your experience at the uh, at the British Museum Library. Uh, I have to say, uh, you, you, you seem to be uh, dealing with it very well, very well indeed. I'm most impressed. Well, I don't know if I would quite say that. I, I did have quite a frightful nightmare last night, but um, I, I'm holding myself together, and I think that uh, getting out of town will be quite the remedy for anything that ails me currently. Nightmares, yes. Well, we all have nightmares from time to time, don't we? Yeah. I mean, that must have been quite a shocking sight to see. Uh, I wouldn't have wished that on anyone to see something like that. Yes, but uh, perhaps lighter topics of conversation would suit us more this day. And then Maggie will probably go on to ask uh, Mr. Fraser a number of questions um, about his uh, his employment with uh, Lady Elizabeth and, and how well he knows her and how long he's known her and how long he's known the family and uh, questions about Lady Elizabeth's family. <laughs> Just a lot of questions. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, he'll, he'll, he'll answer your questions. Obviously, he's not going to go in any, into any great detail about it because um, he's, you know, he's a fairly astute fellow. Um, and, you know, if he, if he kind of cottons onto the fact that you're you're fishing for information, then he'll, uh, he'll answer in more sort of vague terms um, because uh, you, you'll you'll definitely get the impression from this conversation that he's he's fiercely loyal to the family um, mm -hmm. and in particular to Lady Elizabeth. So you know he he uh, he doesn't have anything but nice things to say to say about her. He'll also um, su try and subtly nudge her in, in, into the direction of uh, for the understanding that Lady Elizabeth is quite a private person and. Uh, while well, she's more than happy to to have uh, Miss Bellinger as a guest in in her house, then there are there are certain parts of of, uh, of the house that uh, it's uh, it's fine for for her to to go to go into, but uh, you know just just to be careful uh, that she doesn't take any any uh, any wrong turns in the house, because uh, obviously that her ladyship's residence is a is a you know it's, it's a private residence. But he's you know he'll be he'll be super subtle about it as well he's not in uh, you know he's not going to intimate in any way that that he he has any kind of any notion or impression that uh, maggie maggie was kind of um exploring or anything like that so you all finish up your travels through the downtown area you get your letters posted uh, some of the other bits and bobs that you need sorted before you go back uh, the two of you arrive back assume afterwards at the photography location to get your uh, photos and then head back for lunch uh, to the residence at Kensington. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's fine. Fine for me. Is, uh, if, uh, unless, uh, unless Maggie has anything in particular she wants to do or she wants to go back to Kensington and, and uh, I can just pick up the, the photographs when they're ready. Yeah, that would be fine. Okay. So, Lady Elizabeth, the good man Fraser, and uh, your house guests are 
a little late arriving back for lunch, but uh, but they do arrive back. And so you are patiently staring at a book, probably. Uh, maybe a locked one, maybe not. Wondering about what comes next. Yes, I've been uh, writing letters and notes to, to various people. I uh, wrote to Lady Alexandra to let her know that I can't come to her soiree in a couple of weeks after all, because I'll be traveling and send a few few notes around, canceling things, and then spend the rest of my morning reading and, as you say, glancing enviously, longingly at my locked book. It's there. There, there are answers in that book, but it, it's confounded you on how to open it. And it's clear that whatever reaction that... Um, Miss Fraser had at your use of this device that the professor brought. Um, if you just had a little bit more time with it, you'd probably been able to uncover it, but, um, you know, always overreacting. Yes, which may be why I inflicted Maggie on him for the morning. But they return, and uh, sandwiches and, and tea are had by all who, who desire it. And try as it might, the clock cannot keep itself from ticking forward. And it becomes time. The welling in each one of you is unmistakable. It is time to go to the train station. And so Armstrong brings the auto around. And uh, Mr. Frazier begins the long and sorted process of getting all of the trunks exactly. and bags. <laughs> well, I'll be coordinating. Yes. yes. You leave that to Armstrong. He's a strong back and, uh, and a good man. And, uh, I'll have one of the footmen help, help him with it as well. Because I dare say there'll be a, a fair bit to, uh, to pack because there'll be Lady Elizabeth's bags and there'll be um, whatever Maggie is, has got with her uh, to bring as well. And uh, uh, there'll be my own suitcase as well. Mm. Mm. Will um, Fraser have picked up my uh, pictures yet? Oh, yes. Yes, they've been retrieved. How do they look? Oh, it's well, quite frankly, it's uh, it's rather stunning. You don't know if you've ever taken a nice picture as you have of of the professor here. He's uh, a bit candid, you think? Maybe I don't know if you're showing the pictures around yet, but um, some of them are maybe not in complete focus as of yet. <laughs> you don't know if maybe you were a little too eager with the camera to get a steady shot, but there are a couple of real solid ones that you've taken. Oh, yes, I would be quite excited about these, and I would definitely be showing Lady Elizabeth. Yep, she's gotten the professor on camera. That's amazing. <laughs> wow, you have some uh, latent skills, I see. Yes, I do look forward to recording our journey in picture form, of course, and my Aunt Edith even said that she has a contact with the newspaper and possibly she could get some of our photos or my photos and stories published. There's an ever so slight wrinkle of distaste on Lady E's face. She says, that would be lovely, I'm sure. I just no photos of me in the newspapers, please. As you wish. I do. Thank you. And then the, uh, the three of you arrive in the... Uh seats in the auto and then uh, begin your journey to Victoria Station. Uh, even the weather seems to have broken a bit, Mr. Fraser. There's uh, patches of blue out today. We seem to have uh, a little sunshine for the start of our journey. That's a good sign, surely. Yes, I think it was meant to be a good day for traveling. The sun's out in February. Not uh, easy to manage, so yes, I think it will be a wonderful trip. Victoria Station is a buzz with people. Armstrong brings the car around, and it seems that there's a specific door that passengers for the uh, Orient Express go through. That there is a, uh, a a specific booth and office that they pick up their tickets at. You're seeing that already with your hawk-like vision, Mr. Fraser. I will summon a, a porter to deal with the baggage. Um, I'll make sure that they're, uh, they've got that all in hand. And then uh, I'll sort of nod to the ladies and say, if you'll excuse me, ladies, I'll, uh, I'll go to the ticket office and uh, retrieve our tickets for us. I shan't be but a moment. Very well. Thank you, Fraser. Professor and Simon, this is where you join our scene. Uh, the two of you arriving from the nearby tube and you not bump into literally 
Mr. Fraser, but uh, you meet him near the doorway. Ah, gentlemen, gentlemen. Fortuitous timing. Afternoon, Mr. Fraser. Mr. Fraser, yes. Professor Courtney. Uh, I was just uh, away to the ticket office to collect our tickets. Um, I can collect yours at the same time, if you like, unless you already have them. No, if you would be so kind. Of course. Uh, You have your luggage attended to already? Yes, I have it with me, and I I believe... uh, Mr. Griffith has his too. Well, let's get a porter for you. Uh, porter? Yes, sir. Uh, would you care to uh, take these gentlemen? Uh, they're travelling on the uh, the Orient Express. They're in the uh, Lady Elizabeth Fitzroy party. Uh, if you'd oh. care to take their baggage and, uh, and stow it aboard, if you'd be so kind. Of course. The old man begins to seeing to your luggage. Very good, and that's for your trouble there. Hmm. Thank you, sir. Tips his hat. Well, uh, if you'll just give me a moment, gentlemen, I'll collect our tickets for us. Um, I've made arrangements for our compartments, and uh, and uh, I'll have reservations for us for the dining carriage for, for this evening's meal as well. Yeah, the ticket office is all too eager to treat you with uh, not only the ticket, but all manner of proper respect. Every bit of this place exudes exactly what Fraser appreciates at his core. Every uniform has specific attention to detail. Every type of staff member here has a specific color that they wear, depending upon their position and, and either from the staff at the booth to you see in the just in the waiting uh, station, you can see that the uh, members of the Orient Express staff have their own specific colors. It's, uh, it's refreshing. Yeah, so it's a, it's a little bit of a strange experience for, for James because... Um, He's kind of caught between the the positions of, of attending to her ladyship and the other, you know the other passengers in the party and and also he is a member of the party so he's being attended to um, as well by the by the staff and in the station and no doubt will be in the same way on on the train so it's a slightly unusual position for him to be in but uh, he's, he's certainly very impressed with uh, with the the turnout of uh, of the members of staff of the you know the porters and the other. The other people who are uh, attending to his his, his requirements, and uh, so he'll go up and uh, wait in the queue, take his bowler hat off, put it under his under his arm as he waits, and does the the, the classic British queuing uh, procedure. You hear the lovely tones after just but uh, a few minutes. You hear the lovely tones of someone say, "Next, please." Good afternoon to you. I have tickets reserved for Lady Elizabeth Fitzroy and party. Oh, of course. Thank you for arriving in such a uh, good time. They uh, turn and gather a collection of tickets. And so this ticket shows that it admits a one first class passenger. It's a beautiful looking ticket full of little touches. And it almost seems as if care has even been taken on the ticket to fill it in with, with scroll work and just every bit of uh attention to detail even placed on that the the ticket itself is named as well and so not only is it a ticket for the orient express but it has the traveler's name upon the ticket I'll just uh, make sure that everything's spelled correctly uh, it does appear to be spelled correctly uh, but you look over each one and the uh, attendant says uh, the porters outside uh, can see to your luggage and, and uh, appoint them to the furlong uh, as necessary uh, boarding will begin in 15 minutes very good, thank you. Uh, is it possible to make uh, reservations for the uh, dining carriage for this evening's meal here, or would I be doing that on uh, when we board the train? I would be happy to take the reservations here and then move them to members of staff before you uh, we leave. Perfect, thank you very much indeed. Much appreciated. The other thing that I wanted to uh, check with you is um, Lady Elizabeth herself has uh, quite particular needs uh, in terms of uh, her movement about about the train. Um, has that been taken care of? I believe uh, when I spoke to the travel agent, they were going to pass this information on to you. Mm, yes, we are aware of her ladyship's requirements and we've made uh, all the arrangements as necessary. Splendid. Thank you very much indeed. Much appreciated. Wonderful. Enjoy your journey. Thank you. Good day to you. Yeah, I'll bring the tickets back out and uh, and meet up with the others then. Um, gentlemen, gentlemen, um, if you'll uh, just uh, take these. Um, uh, Mr. Griffith, uh, this is your ticket here. And uh, Professor Courtney, this one's for you. Now look after those, if you'd be so kind. Uh, 
I shall uh, go and uh, see uh, see to the ladies uh, to bring them into the station, and uh, I dare say we can all board. The train will be departing in uh, approximately fifteen minutes or so, so we'll need to get a shift on. Yeah, it isn't lost on you, Mister Fraser, that the ticket says prompt departure. I wouldn't expect anything less. So Victoria Station is swallowed a bit by the presence that the Orient Express or the crew itself exhibits here. You separate from the rest of the passengers here, the common traveler going somewhere in and about the city. It has its own personal platform. And while the train itself is not specifically the Orient Express, as you've come to understand, Mr. Fraser, the actual Orient Express ride begins uh, after you get across the ferry to Calais. This is, train is staffed by the same people, same company. It's rather breathtaking to, to arrive at. So when you all arrive at that platform, there's a smart cream and umber colored carriage. Each one seems to be uh, an original masterpiece. You can tell that the, the staff here has taken all care as to properly clean and prepare the outside of the carriages even looking for the common smog and and dirt that might cling to some of the other trains you've ridden on here in England, that common gunk has been even removed as well. It seems that all the windows have been cleaned. They have a team of people that are now, even now, just just walking off the back of the platform as they finish their work. And she shines here in the limited light that comes in from portals at the station. Well, I'll head outside again and... uh make sure that the, the just kind of keep an eye on them make sure our armstrong is sorted out and then escort the ladies in to join um, mr griffith and mr courtney if they haven't already made their way out to to speak to them and then i'll assist uh, lady elizabeth to board the train and then watch as the others assist lady um, maggie as well lend her a hand to get up the step on as i'm presuming it's you know there's a bit of a step up onto the... Onto yeah, the it so. is far steeper than you were prepared for, Mr. Frazier. Um, you notice, too, that this train has a totally different um, mechanics underneath it uh, than the other trains that you're used to. The The spring work here that is uh, mechanically part of this train is different. Um, you can tell that there must be a good uh, half meter difference between the heights of the train. I'll keep my eye open as well, and um, if it becomes apparent that we need a, an additional step or something like that, then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll kind of catch the eye and nod to one of the porters to, to hop to it. So it isn't just that. It is when uh, Lady Elizabeth and you uh, arrive uh, near the train, the porters have already provided it at standby. Marvelous. And Perfect. so when you go to turn to think, oh, we might need something, they have it in hand waiting and they, they set it down so that way uh, Lady Elizabeth when you board the train it is a smoother gentler step than what would be afforded everyone else naturally uh, and you are the first to board the train naturally inside it is something of a phenomenon there's resplendent and rare timber veneers with uh, custom loomed fabrics and brass works starch white tablecloths you can see in, in the dining car fresh flowers it appears just from a, a glance mr fraser they're using sheffield silver and some of the finest tableware you've seen on a train before all the cars here have been appointed with uh, affection and care for uh, what should be an auspicious journey and that's not to say that the five of you are the only ones boarding the train but it does seem that uh, maybe a, a few heartbeats of time were given to Lady Elizabeth when she boarded the train. Porters have seen to making sure that she doesn't feel rushed getting on board. The rest of you board. Porters see to your luggage. You begin sussing out where it is that you're staying, yes? I will show everyone to the compartments that uh, I've arranged for them. Lady Elizabeth's will be at the, uh, the head of the carriage beside her Maggie's compartment, um, and then myself. And then there's a twin compartment that... Um, We've booked for uh, Mr. Griffith and Mr. Courtney to share. The train itself is a marvel, and it really is something which which you have to take in. I mean, even entering the train and going to the sleeper cars, it, which is your which is your first stop, in between that and and the dining car at the top, 
Um, you can see that there's a fully appointed bar here. So I guess the question I have for you guys is, is what what are you doing when you get on the on board on the train before it takes a, before it uh, begins to move out of the station? Well, first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that all the uh, luggage is brought to the correct rooms and that kind of thing, that Lady Elizabeth has everything she needs, um, make sure that all the facilities are in order. Uh, just just basically comfort myself that, that uh, there's not going to be anything um, that she doesn't need that is easily to hand. This is it's particularly difficult for you as a as someone who has such a background in service, and that is many of the things that you would be normally doing have been left to other people, and you're beginning to feel like well you're a, you're a customer, and that's it's a very strange mental place for you to be. It's a bit out of your hand. Once I've kind of um, assured myself that everything's in order from that respect, um, I'm going to go to my room, uh, to my compartment. I've got that. A large, fairly large luggage suitcase with me, and, mm-hmm. and another smaller one as well. Go into the room, place the place the suitcase onto the onto the bed. Check through the room, make sure everything's where I want it to be. Glass of water by the bedside, all this kind of thing. Open up my suitcase, take out my clothes, and hang it up. And there's a couple of other things in my suitcase that uh, that I take out as well. One of which is a uh, a long wooden box. It's approximately three feet long, or there or thereabouts take that out and uh, place that carefully underneath the bed place a, it's a little uh, 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 old photograph as well in a little frame place that beside the bed as well and uh, just kind of settle myself in the room and then sit and wonder what to do with myself <laughs> <laughs> uh yeah speaking of wondering what to do with yourselves professor you and your friend simon have a serious matter to attend to and that is who is on top and who is on bottom because you have been booked into a double berth. And while you do have an adjoining room, which seems to have the uh, a wash station and whatnot, you have a very classic conundrum. I'll take the bottom book. Um, yes, that's, um, that's fine. Yes. Maggie. Yes. It seems that mm-hmm. you and um, Lady Elizabeth are, are bunking very close to one another. This was not lost on me when I saw our rooms. It would appear they're even adjoining. Uh, a bit, yeah. Yeah, it does seem like that they're, they're adjoining a bit. Although it does also look like um, the door that that she would could go through, she could also lock and then use a, a It has already been blocked with a chair. <laughs> as soon as I walked in, there was a there is a chair going against that door, and it's locked. <laughs> Maggie's still very excited. <laughs> Maggie would want to know. Maggie would first want to find find her room so that she knows where she is staying. Uh, but then she would also want to make sure she knew uh, where everyone else is going sure. to be. It, it does take you a second or two to get back out in the hallway just because of the, the traffic of the porters and the people. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are a myriad of different folks joining uh, this train. And there's an awful lot of luggage being carried through uh, by those porters. They're definitely uh, working overtime to get everybody settled. Mm. Maybe it's best if I stay in my room for now. I do have those pictures to show Richard, but I'm sure that uh, I will have a chance to uh, see him later. So I might just try to ch- chat up Lady Elizabeth through the door. Uh, oh, well. Lady Elizabeth, the door seems to be stuck. Oh, oh my. Yes, yeah, so it is. Is it able to open on your side? Uh, you, you hear a little bit of handle jiggling. No, it, it isn't. Hmm. Well, possibly we can have someone see to this. Yes, well, that's hardly the most uh, pressing matter at the moment. They've got a lot to do to get the train going. Oh, oh, um, yes, of course. A, a future, uh, a, a future concern. Quite. Lady E is uh, unpacking her personal things and putting them exactly where she wants them. It's part of her ritual. Whenever she travels uh, in a in a sleeper car, she puts everything exactly where she wants it to be. First thing so she can't be too tired to do it later and make sure she uh, can easily access things should she need to. So I suppose that begs the question then, where what, where are you putting the book? Oh, the book is staying in my bag on my person. It is not going anywhere where I can't see it. Hmm, okay. 
anything else specifically you're putting in certain spots. It looks like you have your own wash basin here, which mm -hmm. is fairly close, so you're not having to uh, share one, uh, mm -hmm. which is nice. My extra walking stick is near the bed in case I need it. I keep one of my notebooks and pens in my bag with the book, but the others go into, into a drawer, and my jewelry goes into a uh, locked compartment. Uh, usually, I, I don't know if that's true for this train, but usually there would be some kind of like locked compartment you could keep things in in your, in your sleeping compartment. There is. There okay. is a place here within the room that you can keep locked. Mm -hmm. So uh, lock those things, lock those things up, and then everything else is where I can <laughs> get to it easily. So my favorite clothes are closest to me so I can grab them quickly. And then uh, the book stays with me. Mr. Fraser, there's an awful lot of fussing going on in uh, Lady Elizabeth's compartment. You can hear uh, quite a bit of moving around. Um, I'll make my way out and uh, politely tap on the door. Uh, is there anything I can assist you with, your ladyship? No, Fraser, just uh, putting things away. Uh, since normally, you know, I would have Bennett do things. So making sure I take care of it myself before I forget. Of course, of course. Well, I'm just two doors down. Um, if you need me, just uh, just let me know. Will do. Thank you, Fraser. I'll be able to hear you, I'm sure. Of course. Thank you, mm -hmm. When I see that Lady Elizabeth's uh, compartment is not the very end one and it's not the one next to the bathroom, to the mm -hmm. WC, which is kind of quite important um, as far as he's concerned that she has uh, easy, easy access to those sort of facilities. Sure. Um, he will actually go and uh, speak to a porter or even the head porter if he can uh, get him and, and ask him um, if that um if that particular compartment is is occupied if there's if it's reserved for anyone at any point along the on the along the journey okay you step out and you begin to look for uh, a porter you find one fairly quickly there's a younger gentleman he's got a what looks like a fairly large trunk that he's carrying through the uh, the hole here but he uh, he directs you um, in uh, in the direction uh, back down towards the uh, the platform and says the uh, uh, chef de train uh, is available if you'd like to make any changes to the burst he he can assist you sir I, I will, I'm happy to be with you in just a moment no that's that's quite all right that's quite all right you carry on you have work to do I'll uh, I'll go and speak to him head over and see if I can find him he is not terribly difficult to find. Uh, he is standing out of the train, just uh, just outside the train, and uh, uh, it looks like he's just attending to some of the, the porter's work, and he uh, sees you arrive and says, uh, uh, yes, sir, uh, is there something I can help you with? Uh, yes, indeed. Um, the, the, uh, the compartments that I'd booked for uh, Lady Elizabeth Fitzroy and, and party, um, I noticed mm -hmm. that um, there is, there is uh, one unoccupied compartment that is... Uh, just uh, to the uh, right-hand side as you look at it. Um, uh, can I ask if, if that is a reserve compartment for any leg of the journey? He begins a very slow nod, and he says, there is... Um, I, I do I beg your pardon, sir. I, I did see the request, although um, that we had another request from... Um, he leans in a bit. Um, there is a um, Russian princess boarding in Paris, you understand? I uh, and and she's she's asked for the uh, the compartment because um, uh, for personal needs, being close to the bathroom. I quite understand. Yes, yes. No, no. That's that's quite all right. That's quite all right. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, yes, I'm sure that won't be a problem at all. Uh, if uh, if there are any changes to the schedule, I've I've kept I'll keep her ladyship in mind, and uh, she'll be the first on the list to get it. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate it. And uh, what, what was your name again? Oh, uh, yes. He uh, looks down at his watch and you hear the overhead whistle of the train go. Uh, Doreen. Ah, well, merci, monsieur. I'll uh, board the train again um, and uh, head, head back down, secure in the knowledge that uh, if questions are asked, I've got an answer for them. <laughs> Good man. A flurry of activity continues around the outside of the train. Uh, things begin to dim a bit inside. And you begin to notice, all of you as passengers begin to notice that the walls here, especially the outer walls, are especially absorbent when it comes to sound. When the train whistle goes, you hear it, but it's not the same as it would be on other trains. 
there's an announcement that gets made throughout the holes that uh, departure is uh, coming shortly. Those of you who uh, keep a pocket watch will notice that uh, it's about 2.18 in the afternoon. And so it seems, unlike some of the other trains in the uh, London area, this train is going to leave on time. And so you settle in. Slowly but surely, the wheels begin to spin. And this massive length of steam-powered mechanics begins to pull out of Victoria Station. You can tell, heading south, your first real touch of knowing that you're going somewhere far beyond where you've been is crossing south over the River Thames. You cross near the Chelsea Bridge, and with each moment, there is a secondary heartbeat placed on what will come when you reach Paris. And so, I'd like to thank you all for listening. Our Horror on the Orient Express adventure can truly begin. What wonders are these? Ants on the march again? Determined, though they know not why, to simply conquer the next anthill? They're like grains of sand, the deserts of time, easily blown by a single breath. My hand alone could lay waste to countless millions. Yet I hold back from such indulgences, for a far more sumptuous affair awaits. Even now, they do my bidding. Each step they take on the path is one closer to me and my brood. I've latched my tendrils onto their coach of steam and iron, and so there is no escape for these ants. Come into my realm, dearest mortals. Let me taste your flesh with my wicked tongues. I await the sounds of your mind snapping like such dry twigs upon the winter field. They'll find out soon enough that normal is all a grand delusion. What is normal for the lion is just chaos for the antelope.